One of the most common makeups that we have to do in theater is often some kind of an age makeup. So an age makeup can be anything from making someone look younger, making someone look middle-aged, or making someone look um, far older and being more into like the elderly or what we consider kind of generally just old age category. So a lot of times I think this makeup um, gets kind of like a bad reputation because I think when we think about it we think of like really harsh lines drawn on someone's face and things aren't blended. Um, but it can be a very effective makeup. I've worked with directors that swore that they hated it and that it would never look good and then I just kind of like worked it in slowly to the character that needed it and I made sure things were blended um, and tried to make things look as natural as possible and it ended up working out. So I don't think that it's something that has to be avoided. I think that um, it can still be theatrical and it can still show up in a really like large space and on a large stage but it can also look believable and natural. So there's a few things um, that you kind of have to take into consideration, um, in my opinion anyway, when you are creating an age makeup. Um, so these things are going to be the size of the theater or the space that you are working in. So if it is a much smaller stage and a much smaller space, um, you're going to have to do a makeup that's a little bit more subtle and that isn't going to be quite as detectable or as noticeable as someone is close up. The farther away someone is and the larger the stage they're going to be on, generally the more intense you have to make the makeup. So you kind of have to take into account before you even start kind of like planning what your makeup is going to look like, how it's going to be seen by the audience, and that's going to help you kind of figure out um, where you need to start from in that respect. Another thing that you have to think about is the lighting. So. If someone is going to be outdoors, that's going to be a much different lighting situation than if someone is going to be inside under really bright, intense, um, intense stage lighting. So it's really important um, that when you do your makeup, you test it under these lights if possible, just because of the way it looks to you in your makeup mirror when you're in your dressing room is going to be very, very different than the way it is going to look um, once you're on stage and under the stage lights, because a lot of times um, the color of the light that is being used on you can kind of alter the way that the colors look, so you may need to swap to a color you didn't think you needed, or if the lights are super, super bright, um, you may have to shade more to kind of like counteract that and then the same goes for if you're in a really really dimly lit scene you may have to brighten those highlights more than what you would kind of think just so that they will show up um, in that particular lighting situation. Um, another thing you have to think about is um, who is this person that you're aging so how old is this actual actor or actress um, or performer versus like who their character is supposed to be so if I am 12 years old and I'm supposed to look 85 obviously um, there's a limit to how much you can do before it starts to look a little bit like ridiculous so I think um, it's possible to age people to whatever age we need them to be and especially I think in um, education and higher education we see this a lot just because obviously if you are in high school or in college you probably don't have access to someone who is 85 to cast into your um, show that you're doing if you need someone to so you're gonna have to be able to do something um, that will get them to fit more into the world that you need them to, but you also need to understand that there are limits to what makeup can do, there are limits to what costumes can do, and um, you want something that's going to read as old age, but you also don't want it to look ridiculous. So you want to make sure that you're kind of keeping everything um, in a believable state, um, and you want to make sure that you don't just have this really elaborate old age makeup with no costume or like wig or hair piece or what have it. Um, to go with it so it all needs to be like one cohesive um, picture that makes sense for who the person is that is portraying that particular character um, and then one other thing that I like to think about is also just what is the personality of this person that um, my performer is playing so um, is it an older woman who loves to wear really bright makeup is it somebody that never wears makeup is it a little kid that has a ton of freckles are they like you know is it I don't know I think a lot of times especially with um, makeup there's a lot that we can kind of like express through it that people don't always think about you know if you if it's somebody who's grumpier then maybe you're gonna draw your lines in a way that kind of suggest that sort of emotion on the face whereas if it's somebody who's like really jolly and happy maybe they're gonna have like brighter cheeks and the way you draw your lines is gonna be more uplifting as opposed to things that are gonna be sagging and looking a little bit sadder um, so it's really important I think um, to kind of pay attention to um, what their personality is or to create a personality for them because I think you can really like build a more like well-rounded character that way um, and you can express it through their costumes the way that they're acting on stage um, it's so good I think for a whole cohesive again like that really like cohesive look if you feel like you're portraying someone who is real by giving them like these very real um, 
personality traits and things as well. Um, so again, before you kind of like dive into the world of age makeup, it's probably a good idea um, to know a little bit about what like the different sections of it are. So I think one that we don't necessarily see quite as often, um, but it is still done, would be a youth makeup or like just youthful looking makeup. So usually the way I like to think of this um, is that you are really just trying to make someone look like very like glowy and bright um, and they have like a lot of color on their face usually too because if we think of little kids um, they're not necessarily you know they're not wearing super heavy makeup um, like I have on right now you know a lot of times they just have they don't have like the under eye circles that a lot of us might have so they have like bright eyes and like rosy cheeks and you're gonna have more color on the lips a lot of times people add freckles you can add acne if they're like a teenager um, if it's a teenager like in the 80s you can certainly use a lot of fun makeup to kind of help express that um so when you're thinking of like a youth makeup it's not necessarily like we're trying to make them look like little dolls or something um but you just kind of want to make people look just kind of like wide-eyed and like wide awake so a lot of times i won't necessarily do i'll do like a little bit of shading and contouring like if i'm gonna have somebody be farther away um just so that their face doesn't get lost but a lot of times i just kind of skip that really heavy um cream contour and I just really brighten the eyes. Sometimes I'll use like a white or like a nude eyeliner pencil on the inside of the eye, like in the inner rim to help brighten it. Um, put on like a rosy blush, put on some freckles, um, like a tinted lip balm on somebody, something like that just to kind of suggest um, just kind of like I guess like a vivid use for lack of better way to think about it. Um, the next way that you might see an age makeup portrayed on stage would be middle age makeup. So that's generally going to be somebody who's like in their 40s, 50s, or 60s usually, or like early 60s more or less. Um, and so that's going to be somebody who's just starting to develop wrinkles, they're just starting to go gray. Um, so they're not going to have the intensity that you're going to see in like the extremely old age makeups. Um, but you might actually be using makeup like this, I think, more often than you think. So I recently did a show um, where only one character um, was going to be like in their 30s and the rest of them were supposed to be more like teenagers and these were mostly um, performers who were like in their 20s. So they actually ended up doing a, like a middle age makeup on the character who was supposed to be 30 and we all were kind of like, this seems a little bit too extreme, like they're only 30, like I'm almost 30 and I don't look like this. But you have to think when you put somebody on stage, um, you usually have to do things that just has to be more intense and it has to be a little bit more like literal and kind of like glaringly obvious so that people can kind of understand um, and get the point of who that character is supposed to be and what they're portraying. So once this person was on stage, he didn't look elderly, he didn't look old, but you could tell when he was standing next to um, one of the like teenage characters that they were clearly, there was a different age um, going on between the two of them and that there was some kind of a gap and that he was clearly older. So. Even with middle age, you might not think it's anything that would be that intense, but really just like emphasizing a couple of shadows around the eyes, or the forehead, um, the nasal labial folds, that's really popular. Um, maybe adding a couple of streaks of gray, depending on how old they're supposed to be. Um, and certainly younger people can have gray hair as well. Uh, but just doing little things like that, that can really help set apart those characters on stage. And it may not necessarily be like elderly, but it's clear that they are older um, than a lot of the other cast or the other characters in the show. And then, um, the makeup that I think we're most familiar with when we think of like theatrical age makeup would be old age. So this is going to be people that are more like 65 plus is what I think of it as. And usually you're going to categorize it into either like a round old age or a sunken old age. So if it's sunken, um, that just means basically that everything is kind of like caving in. Um, and sort of thinning out and if it's round that means that there's still a little bit of fullness left in the face But that's gonna be more of like a saggier makeup um, And it's gonna have a little bit more of like kind of like a jowl action going on um, I don't think that unless like the script really really calls for it. I don't necessarily like if I just have like a general old age makeup, I'm just I just kind of do whatever looks best um, on that performer so if there's somebody when I look at them you know, if their face is already very thin, there's probably more of a chance that they're going to end up with more of like a sunken old age look when they grow older. Um, versus if I have somebody that already has like fuller cheeks, um, they're probably going to have more of like a round old age look. So you want to do whatever makes sense for the person's face that you are working on. Um, but you also want to make sure that you can adjust it um, to the specific character that you're working on. 
um, so that it makes sense in the context of like what your show is. So I think it's like good to have the ideas of round and sunken in your head, but I don't think necessarily that every character is going to 100% be sunken or every character is going to 100% be round um, unless it calls for it specifically in the script most people might have like a little bit of a combination um, both of them just because everybody's face is definitely gonna age in a different way um, and even though we're creating characters on stage we still want them to be to be believable like we talked about so you want to make sure that um, you're doing things that aren't gonna seem super super off or super ridiculous um, when you're just trying to make something seem um, more realistic so I did all the demos and everything, so I'm not going to get like super into exactly um, how you create old age makeup, but basically um, what we are doing is we are just using highlighting and shading to kind of like create an illusion on our face that there are wrinkles and like sagging skin and sunken in areas that aren't actually there. So the way I think of old age makeup is basically you are doing the opposite of everything that you did in your corrective makeup. So all the time we just spent, you know, correcting our under eye circles and you know, lifting all these things in her face and emphasizing her cheeks and things like that, you're basically just gonna kind of throw that out and do the opposite. So what I usually tell people to do is if they're not sure like where to start, um, especially because I think like what colors to use for old age makeup can get really confusing for people. Um, I always tell people start with whatever your regular highlight and contour shades are. So that's why I like to teach corrective makeup first um, and make sure people have a good understanding of that and they know what colors work for them for that. And then we move into old age. Um, Depending, of course, on the situation that you're in, you may have to like amplify your highlights or amplify your shadows, but if you at least start with a highlight and a shadow color that you know looks right on you, that's going to help you have a better gauge of where you need to go from there to kind of bump it up. So generally, most old age makeup, when you're creating wrinkles, that's going to be something that's a few shades deeper than your skin tone and your highlight is going to be a, shoe, a few shades brighter. Um, the farther away you are, the more like contrast you're going to need. So you may have to, again, you might have to like amplify those amounts. Like it might have to be five shades deeper or five shades brighter, just kind of like depending on the lighting, the stage situation, a lot of different factors. Um, but generally speaking, just kind of start with where you're at with your corrective and see how it looks. If you need more contrast, then kind of slowly increase them um, and see where that kind of gets you. Um, a lot of times, a lot of wrinkle colors are a little bit warmer, which I think is a good thing but if they get too warm especially on like fair to medium skin it can end up looking kind of muddy um and it doesn't necessarily read as old age things just kind of like kind of get they look a little bit messy um and sometimes i think it can almost look more like a dirt makeup so i do think it is important to retain like a little bit of like a cool tint in there um or even more of like a neutral shade almost i think for a lot of skin tones um so a lot of times you'll see that um, purple gets added into a lot of age makeup so uh, Misty Violet is a color by Bed Nye that is used for a lot of age makeups and I think just like a little hint of that for a lot of people that can help cool things down if um, their shadows are a little bit too red but you also have to um, always keep in consideration what someone's undertone is and what their skin tone is so if somebody is really really warm if I put something really really cool on them it's it might gray them out and it might just not look right and then same goes for if somebody is really really cool and I put something super warm on them it could make them look a little bit like like again like that's where people start to look a little bit muddy so there are very like general rules and like general colors that you can use for age makeup and for creating shadows but a lot of times I've found that um, again, it's one of those things that it's personal, like everybody's skin and tone and undertone is going to be a little bit different and sometimes a, a, like a good combo of something that's a little bit warm and a little bit cool, um, especially depending on different parts of the face, is going to help you get um, and create a more accurate um, age makeup and a more like believable age makeup. I think like especially around the eyes, I love to add in like purples um, and then sometimes even like a little bit of blue and like a little bit of red if you put it like right under um, the like lower lash line. That can be great for eyes but if I put too much purple everywhere else on my face that might start to look a little bit bruisey or fake. So you also just have to think about um, the specific part of your face that you're aging and make sure that the colors you're using um, that they'll show up on stage but that they're also a color that you would see in real life as well. Um, and Really generally speaking, you know, if you're creating a wrinkle, just like when we did our highlights and contouring um, for corrective makeup, every highlight needs a shadow, every shadow needs a highlight. So really generally speaking, you're going to have like um, your highest contrast, they're going to be right next to each other. So my darkest dark can be here, my lightest light can be here, and then they both kind of like feather out and fade out and blend out from there. So generally speaking, um, your highlights are going to go beneath your shadows 
but depending on the part of your face that you're on sometimes that can get a little bit weird um, I think especially like when you're working on the forehead you know sometimes what's below one thing that's going to be above another line so I think as long as you think of it more in terms of um, as long as they always have each other that's going to help you kind of figure out um, your placement of those things and it's also really important yes keep that really strong contrast when they're right next to each other but always make sure to blend it out the ends should always be feathered out for your wrinkles um, you know they should be feathered out like usually your shadows are gonna be blending up your highlights are gonna be blending down again according to the part of the face that you're on but generally speaking that's a good way to do it and to look at it um, and you don't want to just leave things as straight lines you can get amazing contrast and create really great shapes without having to have like these really harsh lines and I think that's why so much age makeup does get like a really bad reputation it's because so many people just leave these really awful lines because we think that's what we have to do um, for it to be seen from really far away and that's not true um, you can get great contrast and still have really nice um, blended lines um, other things you can do with age makeup um, which I talked about in the demos as well would be to create like age spots so for that you can use like smaller brushes and like draw on actual age spots um, which are usually just like sun damage hyperpigmentation so that's usually again I'll start with whatever the shading color is but those are usually a little bit warmer as well for most people um, the farther away you're gonna be the more intense they might have to be so that's one of those things that sometimes once you put it on it looks really weird up close um, but with age makeup it's really important to take a break from it and to walk away and look at yourself from like across the room because you have to think like no one is going to be looking at your face um, when you are this close with that much makeup on most likely it's going to be like 20 feet back or however many feet back so you need to be doing makeup for that and not makeup for someone to be looking at you right up close um, so always keep that in mind but yes you can create um, age spots with brushes you can use like liner pencils um, I'll just sometimes use like a fine pour stipple sponge um, I like the fine pour ones for this kind of work so that way it doesn't create anything like too large but if I want it to be larger if you just kind of like twist it and hold it on the skin that's going to give you a little bit more color in that area so you can use it to create age spots I'll do that with redness kind of across the nose and the cheeks um, you can do that if you like if you just need to break up the color I'll do that a lot like sometimes I'll do an age makeup on someone and I'm like this is way too intense um, so I'll just like powder them down stipple a little bit of the foundation back over it and then powder it again um, and you'll be kind of like good to go um, so that's another thing you can do. You also want to make sure that you keep in mind whatever skin is showing needs to be aged. So if it's, you know, if they're covered up here, great, just do their face. But if you can see any of their neck and their chest, you have to make sure you age that. And same goes with hands. Um, I think usually people have sleeves, so you don't have to worry about it. But um, make sure you age any skin that's showing. Um, aging the hair is a really important thing to do too. Um, popular hair aging products. So Ben Nye makes all of their like liquid hair colors. Um, they have hair white that's like I think it's snow white and then they also have an ivory which is gonna be better um, for darker hair just because um, just like we learned in corrective makeup if you try to put something really really light over something really dark just like with the tattoo you're gonna see that darkness through it and it's not gonna give you that true color that you're trying to get so if I try to put just pure white over black hair a lot of times that's gonna give me like a grayish bluish tint and not that pure white but if I use something that's a little bit more like the ivory shade or if I um, one way I do it is I actually straight like color correct first um, and I use Krylon's aqua color to do that um, if you layer that color that's gonna help you color correct it and then you're gonna start from a more neutralized place that's gonna allow for you to get to that really like bright pure white um, that's especially important if you ever have to like photograph something because things might look correct um, to our natural eye but once it's photographed I have found at least with hair white that um, it can look really different so you also have to kind of think about like is this most important what it's gonna look like in pictures or what it's gonna look like in real life so always kind of keep that in mind um, but I think adding like a little bit of hair white is nice whiting out the eyebrows is great any facial hair on the face adding gray or white is great um, there's hair color sprays you can do that with there's hair mascaras they sell white mascara now that would be appropriate for smaller areas I don't necessarily for stage like to white out the eyelashes because I think that help that kind of like makes you lose your eyes a little bit um, but if someone's gonna be really really close and you want that effect um, you can certainly do it but just know that you usually lose a little bit of definition on the eyes um, and you want to make sure that whatever you're using by the eyes um, is an eye safe product I really try to keep it to like white mascara um, or like Krylon's Aqua Color, um, which is a face and body paint, but you can use it on hair, um, and it shampoos right out, 
you can use the bed and eye hair color but I still I don't know it's so liquidy I just get afraid it's gonna get into somebody's eyes but they make a lot of white mascaras now there's mascara primers that are white that you could use um, so just kind of always use caution with those kinds of things and make sure that you're not putting things um, where they're not safe to be same goes with if you are gonna put a little bit of red um, on your lower lash line make sure it's an approved red for the eyes you know your blush and your lip color might not be safe to use under your eyes it may not really do much it might just cause a little irritation but it's always better to be safe and to kind of follow the rules of your makeup so make sure like I'll usually use like a kind of burgundy eyeshadow because I know that it's safe because it's meant to go there um, so always be mindful and careful about those things um, but ultimately I think like age makeup it's, it's one of the hardest makeups that we have to do in theater but it's also it's also really fun I think that like the process of doing it sometimes um, that can be a little bit tricky and it can be kind of discouraging because I think it is really hard um, because you're basically taking like usually like a really flat smooth surface and you're trying to create all of this texture that's just not there because um, you know when we see it in movies and everything they usually have on prosthetics or sometimes people use liquid latex um, but if you're just really painting on um, your highlights and your shadows that's that's a really difficult thing to do so don't ever feel like um, you're not doing a good job with it or you're not a good artist or something because it is really hard to do um, just like drawing on paper and trying to create depth is really hard it's the same thing um, on your face so don't ever get discouraged with it um, it is really fun I feel like once you're done and once you get through it um, and the most important thing is that you're just staying true to your character um, and always keeping in mind you know the setting that they're going to be in the size of the stage that they're going to be in and just making sure that um, you're doing your best to make it believable while also um, kind of keeping in mind where they're actually going to be so it doesn't get too over the top or too outlandish um, but yeah so hopefully that is just kind of a good little intro into age makeup for theater and hopefully through that and all of the demos it will start to make a little bit more sense